I just love that. Hello, I'm Bruce Shane, and today we'll look at another demonstration of static electricity. In this case, it's the effect of a static charge on a falling stream of water. So, let's take a closer look. Now, this experiment's been around for years and years. I've seen it listed in hundreds of science books and websites, and basically they suggest starting with a comb, which you can rub through your hair, Or well, the other suggestion is to take and use a balloon. And once again, rub it in your hair, build up a static charge, and bring it near that stream. Now, doing this experiment with a balloon or with a comb is fine, but if you know a little bit about the triboelectric series, There's all sorts of other materials and objects that we can do this experiment with that will make it a little bit more interesting. You can use all sorts of plastic animals and pretend to make them drink. PVC pipe and wool works good. This is glass and orlon. Saran wrap against your skin. or even simply use a plastic ruler. <laughs> I just find that amazing. Now, why does it do this? Well, there's actually several theories, but I think we should start with the static charge itself. When I rub this vinyl strip with wool, it becomes negatively charged. And if I bring a negative charge near that stream, it's attracted to it, which means the stream must have a positive charge on it. Here I have an acetate strip, and if I rub that with Orlon, it becomes positively charged. Now, if I bring this positive charge near a stream, let's see, it also bends towards it, which means the stream must also have a negative charge on it. Now, where are these charges coming from? Well, the most commonly accepted theory looks at the molecule of water, which is dipolar. The hydrogen side of the molecule is positively charged, and the oxygen side is negatively charged. This molecule is free to rotate, and the hydrogen end would be attracted to the vinyl, and that's what's going to bring the stream towards it. The oxygen end of the molecule is negatively charged, and that negative charge will be attracted to the positively charged acetate. In this case, the molecules simply rotate in the opposite direction, causing that steam to be pulled towards the charged strip. Here are a few pictures of this explanation that I found online. Now, this idea is just a theory. When I researched this experiment, I found other theories which also may explain the behavior of the stream. For example, water is loaded with ions. There's strong evidence that the negative ions pull the water towards a positive charge, and the positive ions are able to pull the water towards a negative charge. There's also a debate whether this is happening inside the stream or on its surface. Another theory suggests that induction causes a polarization of the charges. Either the charges are separated from one side of the stream to the other, or that the charges are driven up or down the stream to escape the same type of charge held near it. So what happens when you hold this negatively charged cup up against the water stream is it will repel the negative charges, the negative ions in the water, some of which will go back up into the tap. And that means the water coming down will be slightly positively charged. I imagine that I may have even missed some ideas. The question is, which one should we accept? Some have suggested that it may be a combination of these ideas acting in unison. But I thought it might be fun to try some additional tests which might get us closer to an answer. For example, what would happen if we tried two of these strips alongside the stream together? The upper negative charge can bend it one direction while the lower negative charge bends it in the opposite direction. For this to occur, there must be positive charges available throughout the entire length. Now when we try it with a negative charge at the top and a positive charge below that, we still find that the stream is attracted to both charges. The same results for both trials might suggest that the positive and negative charges are available throughout that whole stream. Now I want to test an idea I had about that polarization. The idea that the electrons are driven up and away from the same type of charge that's being brought near it. If that's true, then we should get an accumulation of charge up in the reservoir. 
and the longer I hold it near it, the greater that charge would be. I'm hoping if the charge becomes great enough that the stream will be deflected away from the charge rather than being attracted to it. If we look at it again, we see the attraction lasts right up to the very end. I think an even more significant demonstration is observing where this strip is held in relation to the length of the stream. We see a lot of deflection at the top where the stream is solid, but as we get closer to where the stream breaks apart and even lower, it decreases and decreases until, as we can see here, no deflection whatsoever. Even when we try it with a larger surface, like this balloon, we still see the same results. So the charge must interact with that solid stream to get any deflection on the falling drops. Now let's eliminate the stream and simply test the drops. If the drops alone are attracted, that would help validate the theory of the dipolar molecule or the ions available being responsible for this movement. Once again, we see no deflection of the drops when that charge is far enough away from the body of water. To me, this is suggesting that polarization is at least partly responsible for this effect. Now, how about if we try two streams? Now, I can bend either stream with a static charge, but let's try in between them. What I'm hoping for is to see if I can get the streams to deflect away from each other. Now I've tried this several times and I simply can't get it to work. Now some of the theories center around ions. Now we do know that this water has a lot of ions in it. We can actually show that. Here I have a continuity tester and it needs a metal to complete the circuit. Now if we test the water, we see that there's enough ions in it to complete the circuit also. Now let's test some distilled water. Now distilled water does have ions in it, but a lot less. So let's see if it conducts electricity. And in this case it doesn't. Not enough ions. Now I want to start this experiment with water that's loaded with available ions. In this case, salt water. And we see quite a bit of bend here. Let's go on and try it with tap water. And finally, our distilled. It looks like we're getting the same results. If ions are responsible for bending of water, then it looks like we haven't reduced them enough to make any difference. So let's go on and try something else. Let's go back to that idea of that dipolar molecule. How about if we try it with a substance that's not dipolar? For example, I have some vegetable oil. Well, I had no idea that the oil would bend towards a static charge. I'm going to need a little bit of help on this one, but in the meantime, let's go on and try some other materials. Here's some common rubbing alcohol. So this was attracted to a static charge, but to be fair, it does have a certain amount of water in it, and that can account for its behavior. Now I want to go back and take another look at that dipolar molecule. The theory tells us that the molecules turn because of the attraction of the static charges. Now I was wondering if we could slow down this ability by adding a thickening agent or making it more viscous and to do that I was going to use some cornstarch. I'm going to add quite a bit of it and if I get it thick enough we're going to have that wonderful material called oobleck. Now let's see how this behaves towards a static charge.
Well, that certainly was fun. Now, let's try it with a few other viscous materials. First up, let's try some honey. Now, here's some dish soap. Next up, chocolate syrup. I also thought I'd try some school glue. Well, this one really responds. It's interesting that all the thick, viscous materials are much more responsive than plain water by itself. Now let's try one more material. This stuff flows very, very slowly. It's very viscous. It's bubble gum. <laughs> Same type of results, but in this case, does water have anything to do with the experiment at all? I think I'm going to walk away from this episode with more questions than I had coming into it. I'm anxious to see your comments and suggestions below. And as always, I want to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Okay, bye. I think I'll try this once more.